Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at some freeware planes starting with the Sukhoi Superjet 100 by Kevin Wijaja off of flightsim.to. All the planes will be off of flightsim.to. Uh, this plane does require uh, fly-by-wire sims A32NX, uh, so the A320 rework by fly-by-wire uh, fly sim and I installed that just using the marketplace. It's free on the marketplace. So uh, it uses the instruments and stuff from that. The exterior model looks pretty good. I went with an Aeroflot livery here. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so off we go. We are at Hong Kong. And I'm just going to fly around a little bit. Just get a sense of how it feels. Now last time I flew the Airbus A320, the stock one and not the fly-by-wire one. It did very interesting very interesting things as far as the sort of automatic autopilot that I can't turn off. Like it auto trims and auto throttles whether I like it or not which I guess is how airbuses work but I don't like it. As we can see coming out of the airport uh, this area could do with some work Part of the reason I decided to fly out of Hong Kong is uh, Hong Kong is not a photogrammetry area, and um, frankly, it it needs some uh, some touch up. So I mean, it's got some uh, special sites at it, points of interest. Interestingly, I tried this out at San Francisco already, and it seemed to have somewhat different, somewhat of a different attitude there. I don't know why. Yes, I'm breaking many rules here, but yeah, the interior obviously looks good again. It's just the A320 as far as I could tell. There aren't a whole lot of liveries for it. Air brakes. Since we're above 250 knots. Yeah, so we have some fancy buildings here, obviously. But the generic buildings really detract from the area. It's a cute plane. I, uh, in the future, I plan to fly uh, around the world in 80 planes like once again. I did that in X-Plane 11, but first I have to have 80 planes and I expect that this will be one of them. Again, for freeware, it's pretty good. You can barely expect working virtual cockpits with freeware in the first place, so this is beyond expectations. We can see I'm maxing out the trim there because I'm really low on airspeed right now. And again, it's just auto trimming and to some extent auto throttling. Dispatch flight. Ah, uh, dispatch A320. So yeah, it's it's got that stuff. I don't know how similar Sukhoi Superjet 100 is to uh, A320. I'm guessing not exactly. It's actually really tough to make out the runways at Hong Kong International like this. Okay. 50, 40, 30. 20. Retard. Retard. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I got the whole Airbus thing. Anyway. All right. All right. So there you have the Sukhoi Superjet 100 by Kevin Wajaja. And the link will be in the video description, but we have a few other planes to take a look at. Well, this is rather interesting weather to test a powered glider, but that's what we have here. We've got the AS33ME by Madolo Simulations. I don't know if that's how I should say it, or MA Dolo Simulations. Anyway, uh, this is what it looks like on the outside. It is a glider. We are in Switzerland, where it is appropriate to have a glider. Uh, you can see the slot where the propeller comes out of. Let's uh, 
bring it out so in order to do that we need to activate the master power and then extend and you can see the angle of the prop going up so this is pretty fancy for a freeware plane I, I don't know to what extent we have like thermals or anything like that uh, flying in this weather is going to be special pain but so yeah, we can throttle up, release the brakes. And we are moving. So no need for a tow plane. Got some squeaking. It seems pretty custom. I mean, I don't know. It's got all sorts of stuff like ballast stuff off to the side here. It's even got the beeps for the vertical I forget what it's called when the gliders have that particular system I sort of like it but <laughs> I'm not particularly good at gliders I'm well I mean except for the space shuttle Ooh, those are trees. So, alright. Exterior-wise, we can retract the landing gear. The, well, the wheel. <laughs> Could totally smash myself against some mountain right now. It's got a fair bit of fuel. Whoa, speaking of which. It's got the negative flaps that gliders have too. Uh, though this the view out here probably won't show it. Oh no, it does. Negative two. Look at that. Whoa. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Maybe I should just keep the trees in view or something. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I've stalled. I've stalled. I've stalled. Oh, come on. I stalled in the glider with the engine on? Must have been the wind. Max altitude 25,000. That would be impressive for a glider. Okay. Um, this time, the weather, we should just clear up. So... No live weather, just a few clouds, thank you. There we go. That's Sion. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed by this. I, I I assume this is all custom stuff, so this is nice. It has little icons for the, the landing gear. That's a, a picture indicator. Probably having the... I, I probably had the flaps at negative two, and that probably had an adverse effect, basically. It has spoilers besides, too. Okay, well, we don't need as much prop. I'll throw it down a bit. Can we get thermal soap? Oh. Hmm, I'm retracting the prop. Well, we're not get getting much happiness off of this hillside here. Nope. Yeah, we are not powered right now, just to be clear. But we're not in particularly great gliding situation here. Still, it's really nice. I'd be interested to see how long a trip I can do in it. The map's better than the stock map. <laughs> Uh, I guess it's it's similar, but no, oh, I still like the roadway thing there, and it looks better. It certainly has better relief indications. So ballast, 
I, I don't know what to do with the ballast, but... Ballast outer. I think it's being dumped. Uh, just activated a spoiler. I probably didn't need to do that. Oop. Well, I'll need to practice with it more. That's my first experience with a glider. Well, okay, second, because we had the rainy one, but... Uh, yep, definitely need to work on that. It's nice though. I especially like having a powered glider, that helps. Alright, next plane. Alright, next up as you can see is the Antonov AN-225 by Dur Anaconda. Well, the... Close-ups of it are a little bit unflattering, but that's really not fair. Um, nice uh, blue-green cockpit, as befitting sort of the Russian-style plane. Uh, Antonov is based in Kiev, or Kiev, and that is where we are. So that is where I decided to take off from. And yeah, of course, otherwise, except for the color of the cockpit, the rest of it is just the stock instruments. <laughs> so... Uh, it's all in English, so there's, I mean, but, you know, what can you, it's freeware, so. Uh, outside, the uh, textures look like this. Again, don't get too close, but all overall, okay. I could have used the rest of the runway. Well, I guess we're not carrying that much right now. So, yeah, throw up. I noticed four dials on the engines here. Does the sim not have, uh, well, there's also only four here, so, uh, I don't know whether it recognizes six engines or not. No, it looks better than the one I had in, uh, X-Plane 11, though. Okay, landing gear retraction. That's sort of fancy, you know, how they sort of stagger. So flaps are retracted. Uh, this is our acceleration at this point. So whereabouts is downtown Kiev? We've, we're uh, this is one of those airports that's really far out from the city, isn't it? Oop, we're going really fast. So yeah, only really acknowledging four engines. So that's a bit sad. But what can we do? Again, freeware. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get a payware AN-225 though. Very special purpose. But again, uh, this is still better than the x -Plane. Well, I think the x -Plane one at least acknowledged six engines, but the cockpit is cleaner because it's using the pre-made assets and the exterior is a little bit better. If we really pump up the mass all the way, it could make for interesting stuff. Uh, Okay, there we go. So we've maxed out the payload and we've got our max takeoff weight now. And we're going down. <laughs> now it's got some heft. Well, I, mean, I see some buildings there, but I'm not too sure. They were pretty slow at rendering, aren't they? They're not really popping up quickly. They're sort of materializing very slowly. Uh, this plane has tremendous momentum when you're going down. Right now I'm pulling back on the stick all the way. Let me level out. Well, we can climb like this. Okay, but now it's losing speed, but I've got the air brakes out and everything. It feels hefty. It's not bad, but I don't think I'm going to bother landing this one right now. So anyway, AN-225 by Dur Anaconda. Okay, next up we have the Curtis J-1 Robin by Don Finucci. Don Finucci has a lot of planes on FlightSim.to available as freeware. They're all, as far as I can tell, converted from 
uh, FSX and with permission by the look of it. This one was originally from Golden Age Simulations and so yeah uh, Don Funucci got permission but conversions from FSX can be iffy and uh, taking a look at this this isn't too bad on the outside and uh, well it's certainly interesting on the inside yep I mean and again it's free so seems it oh I did not touch anything suddenly the RPM has gone up oh, okay well let's let's keep keep on that fine throttle up better ticket from in here tail draggers you know this is not a very fast plane uh, we are in Buffalo because that's where Curtis aircraft was based and maybe we can take a look at Niagara Falls. I don't know how long it's got to take this plane to get there. I mean, the airspeed indicator tops out at 90 knots. There is an I like a lot of planes of this kind of style. Or, you know, like, uh, like the Blario 11. Not a whole lot of speed to work with before you stall, so... You can see the green area on here is fairly thin. So we want to go west actually. But it doesn't have any problem turning. The shader on it might be a little bit iffy. Shutter plate closed. Mixture there, primer. I don't think this plane would have actually had trim. Well, the plane didn't seem particularly tricky on takeoff, considering it's a tail dragger, and on the whole, I don't think it's difficult, though I guess in uh, strong wind it would be, considering its speed. Sounds sort of what you would expect, so no problems there. It's not making a Cessna sound anyway. Okay, let's see how Niagara Falls looks these days. Last time I came around here, it didn't look particularly good, but that was a while ago. Well, it's hard to do waterfalls. It does look better than the last time I was here uh, in the flight sim. Not the last time I was there in person, but... Um, yeah, f flowing water might need to be a thing. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. It could be worse. All right, so Niagara Falls, everyone. But we have other planes to attend to, so that'll do it for the Curtis J1 Robin. In addition to letting Don Fanucci convert the Curtis J1 Robin, Golden Age Simulations also allowed Spud 3030 to convert the De Havilland DH60 Gypsy Moth and Cirrus Moth. So this is also originally by Golden Age Simulations from FSX. And it is a biplane. And we are taking off from Hatfield, which is where de Havilland was based. This is just a grass strip though. But yeah, this is, in this case, the Cirrus Moth. And as biplanes are, there, it is very nimble. The monoplanes of the era were a little bit stickier. The exterior model is very nice. The interior, I mean, again, for freeware is uh, very much good enough. Better than expected. The altitude gauge, are you doing something altitude gauge? I don't think the altitude gauge is working. That height gauge does not seem to be doing anything. The side slip indicator also isn't doing anything. My planes are good fun. Unless you kill them, of course. But this one seems very good. As far as not dying. So, that's good. That's nice. Could probably do some stunt work with it. 
But alright, this is just a uh, quickie, and we'll take a look that, at the next plane. Alright, next up is something completely different. It is the F-22A by Top Mach Studios. Exterior model looks like this, and I sort of wish it had more of a bump map. It's a little bit too smooth. I mean, the F-22 is a very smooth plane and all. But this could do with a bump map. It looks somewhat cartoon. It's uh, sort of got a cartoon shader look to it right now. Uh, interior, it's just got the stock instruments, of course. Uh, MFDs are hard to come by, let's face it. So this is what we've got, but it's not too bad. Again, uh, for freeware, you know, it's got some attempts to adapt certain things and get some weathering in and it's frisky on its landing gear but a lot of fighter planes are so it really accelerates fast but then again it should uh, it's got a thrust to weight ratio of one so if we go perfectly vertical we should be able to for quite a while I mean, if I had prepped that properly, we could probably go up for even longer. There are a lot of things that the F-22 can do that most planes, well, anything but the F-22 can. It's got this huge wing. Now, we don't have afterburn effects, but that's just going to be how it is. As far as breaking Mach 1 is concerned... We can see the Mach number on the visual there. Uh, we have broken Mach 1. No special sounds, which is probably for the best. It is a little bit stuttery. The game does not like going past Mach 1, let's face it. Especially, probably doesn't like it when inverted. Let's just roll it back around. We did take off from Nellis. I don't think it'll get to any unreasonable speeds, though. Uh, we're at Mach 1.4-ish, 18,000 feet, and it's not really accelerating very quickly. Probably we'll have to get to altitude to get to Mach 2, which makes sense. It's got a yellow zone at about 830 knots indicated. Oh, I have my flaps down. That might be a little bit of a different thing. They probably should rip off the flaps. It looks like the flaps are busted now. They're not going up. Oh, the lag is intense right now. I think the sim can handle the F-15 from DC Designs better than it seems to be able to handle this, but I'm not sure. Well, anyway, now that we've picked up some speed, even though we have the flaps down, let's see how vertical we can go. And it's climbing. Oh, a little bit of yaw. Oh, this way, this way. Well, we're in stall area at 45,000 feet this time. But is it going to do anything to me for being basically at zero speed here? Just going to roll over and start heading down. No big deal. certainly a fun little freeware plane if you need a supersonic jet and you don't want to pay for one this is probably the best that we're gonna get I don't know I'll have to double check on that anyway I have one last plane to take a look at so let's just jump into it and see how it looks 
Okay, well, this is the Piaggio P166 by Don Fanucci, converted from FSX uh, from a model by Mario Noriega. And Don Fanucci got permission to use it. It's got some nice gauges over here, but the main panel doesn't seem to be working. Uh, ah, another thing that's sad is apparently only one of our engines is working. Trying to start engine 2. Oh, there it goes. Or whatever, engine one, I mean. Okay, well, manually uh, doing the auto start thing seems to have worked out. I think. Well, it's not reading over here, though. Uh oh, it's going up now. Okay, I don't know why we started with only one engine, but. We seem to have two now. Even though we have some flaps, it says flap zero down there. The exterior model's fine though. And I like the Piaggio 166 given the fact that it's a pressure prop and sort of a unique configuration. We're in Venice. I figured it'd be a nice place to fly this one. Oh, now it's working. All right, so maybe we just didn't have... Uh, maybe the generator is on engine one. And since engine one wasn't running, it was empowering the avionics. So I guess that might be a thing. Uh, we do have some weird sort of lighting artifacts on the instrument panel, though. This flickering. So that's not great, but at least we solved the major problem here. But Venice, everyone. So now this is looking a little bit better, and it can join the others in the increasing list of planes I have for flights in 2020 that may get some work in an around the world in a planes sort of series. Anyway, with this flyby of Venice and a sex satisfactory takeoff with the Piaggio 166, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.